Welcome to this ministry special. I'm Debbie Frazier. Is there one thing you can do today that is good for you? Is there something you can do today that is helpful to someone else? Good deeds and productivity are not stifled by staying in place. Thanks for joining us. And if you would like prayer, know that our Care Force is here for you. Call, text, or email for a confidential conversation with someone who understands and cares. You can also go to tln.com or tlnwest.tv for information on when you can watch these specials or to view them online. Let's start with the scripture, Philippians 4.8, one of my favorites. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, especially now when there is much more alone time. Use it to elevate your faith and get along with God and plan your future together. Renew and refresh your spirit. No better time than right now. Joining me today is Pastor Clay Allen. He's the founder of Avenue, a ministry for those who are deeply affected by sexual brokenness. Thank you for being with us, Clay. You're welcome. A joy to be with you, Debbie. Will you expound on that Bible verse I just read and how can the direction of our thoughts help or hurt us during this pandemic? Yeah, it's amazing what the mind can do as we focus on the Lord and all good things and get our minds off of the things that are a distraction uh, that the devil loves to put in our, our, our path to trip us up. So it's absolutely crucial that we have an open heart and an open mind to what the Lord has for us to focus on, which of course is him and all his goodness and the right way of living for our lives and our family's lives. Because a lot of times uh, God has us um, living our lives the way he wants us to, to positively uh, impact and uh, affect our family that's closest to us. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where focused on positive things in our mind, uh, the way that God wants us to live coming right right into play. And it's going to be right about what we talk about today, too. Well, sheltering in place has opened the door for all those great opportunities, as the scripture talked about, for us to spend time in the word and in Christ. But it's also opened the door for the pornography industry, which is what you're going to talk about a bit. Yeah. Can you describe how that could happen so quickly? Yeah. You know, if you look at our nation's history, our church's history within our nation, we have right now the greatest invasion in North America occurring literally right now. And this is a parallel invasion, if you wish. It's inv invisible. It's a virus. But it's far more pervasive than COVID-19. And it's occurring literally everywhere in North America. And it may even be worse than COVID-19 in the sense that it will exist after we resolve COVID-19. However, that gets resolved, this virus, this pandemic that is impacting North America will still exist. Now, what happened was pornography distributors uh, got this wicked idea and then they executed on it. And that is to use the coronavirus's shelter in place orders to provide tens of millions of quote free 30-day subscriptions to enslave millions of people uh, in North America. And this is irrespective of age, by the way. This is incredible. Uh, and it's never happened in our country's history. Porn distributors knew that men in particular would be stuck at home. They'd be bored. They'd be scared, perhaps, because of their job or loss of job. And they'd need an escape. And as a result, scores of men, young and old, are now partaking in pornography as they isolate. Now we have the stats to prove this. The stats are now just in. If you were to look at the peak usage of pornography in North America, it peaked 40% over that beginning March 17, 2020. This is incredible. The, the colossal carnage that's occurring right now to men, to women, their families, kids, their finances, their, their very callings in the Lord, and entire churches are being impacted. And what's really incredible to me, Debbie, is most people are unaware that this invisible silent invasion is taking place. Wow. And, and so if you look at the motives behind this, 
Satan's sneak attack and tends to literally silently destroy Christians, their futures, their churches. And of course, the pornographers have profit in mind, right? What, they, what they're thinking, and it's actually taking place right now, is porn producers and distributors, after 30 days, uh, are reaping a windfall as addicted people begin tithing, if you wish, quote unquote, to porn producers and distributors instead of to their churches. And, and this is because new habits are taking place within this uh, shelter-in-place time. Now, this is nothing new, but the scale of it is new, is what's taking place. Jesus talked to us about this in John 10.10. 10. He actually gave us a warning that the devil's motive is to steal from us, to literally kill us, to destroy us. In the same verse, uh, Jesus talked about this incredible promise to each one of us to live a better life, to have a more meaningful life, and have a life of abundance. And, and, and so, uh, especially for your audience, uh, for those that are watching, or perhaps you know somebody, I wanted to be really clear about uh, this whole idea of, uh, of toxic sexuality, pornography, and so forth, because Jesus defined this in one sentence. It's found in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5 at verse 28, where Jesus described the lust of the heart being equivalent to adultery. And back in those days, the penalty for adultery was death. And death is represented in the Bible as separation between us and God. And so if we were to really be honest about this, uh, we, uh, we've all lusted in our hearts and fallen short of God's standard for living and loving. And that's why we all need forgiveness and restoration. So the question begs, I suppose, when you're looking at what's happening right now, literally, in our culture and in our church, how are we doing with this whole issue of pornography in the church? The stats are out and they break my heart. And I know they make Jesus weep. 77% of Christian men view pornography on a regular basis. I want you to just let that soak in for a minute. That's nearly eight out of 10 men. So poor pastors. Clay, trying... it's, it's obsessive. Oh. <laughs> so 77%. Yes. It's not an hour. I mean, it's obsessive. Yes. Yes, it really is. And, you know, I feel bad for pastors in a sense. And I know the Lord is really grieved about this because the pastor is trying to execute his vision and mission for his church with literally two out of 10 men in his church. And then, uh, then we see other stats like uh, uh, pornography now is the number one cause of divorce among Christians. Mm -hmm. This isn't the secular world. This is among Christians. It's now surpassed financial strain as the number one reason people get divorced. And then if you look at our young people, it's, it's even worse. Um, we have 87% of university students right now having virtual sex on uh, their smart devices, tablets, computers, and so forth. This is nearly nine out of 10 of university students. And if you look at the internet as a whole, pornography now is the number one consumed item on the internet by a huge, huge amount. The next number two is in a distant past, or distant, uh, um, Number two. So when you look at this uh, and, and you realize that God talked to us about this thousands of years ago, what's interesting to me is science is catching up now. Science made three recent major discoveries about the brain and pornography. And the first uh, interesting discovery is that the scientists discovered that porn rewires our brain for the worse. And it happens very quickly within a half a second of watching pornography, your brain starts to put out chemicals. And those chemicals literally create new nerve pathways in your brain. And it's you know, Clay, not for good. It's for worse. Before, before yeah. you go any further on the, the next two steps, um, let's sure. just pray that folks will open their mind to this because I'm, I'm oh, pretty sure yeah. that there will be, you know, those watching um, that, that are maybe just kind of meddling with this and, and don't understand the depth. And then, um, you know, there may be some women watching who don't understand what's going on with their marriage right now and, and why things are souring. And let's just pray um, that before you share your message with us today, that, that people will enter this with an open mind and heart. It's a really great idea, Debbie. Okay. Yes. Father, as we come to you in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, I pray for absolutely everybody in the audience mm -hmm. watching this or knows of somebody who has been impacted in a negative way from toxic sexuality, pornography, betrayal, whatever it might be, getting them off track relationally uh, in their relationships or 
with their sexuality and misusing sex. Father, I pray through the powerful name of Jesus and through the powerful guidance of the Holy Spirit that you draw men and women to you. Help them know that you love them just the way that they are mm -hmm. and that you have a much, much better way for them to live their life, a life of abundance. And I pray, Father, that people stop getting ripped off by the devil. And I pray, Father, that you help each of us help one another in this because we can't do it alone. We need each other and we need you. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. 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 And when you talk about rewiring, rewiring the brain, point one, so quickly, you know, some may be only a month or two into this. And so I appreciate you sharing with us today so that, um, you know, even wives can determine what's going on in their households. Um, yeah. Susan didn't know what was going on in your situation, I know, many, many, many years ago. And so yeah. it's very great news for us. Please begin to share. Oh, sure. So this brain rewiring we were, uh, that scientists have just discovered, it's really incredible how quickly it takes uh, half a second for your brain to start releasing these chemicals. Your brain starts to then create brand new nerve pathways in your brain that start to rewire it for the worse. And uh, of course, the Bible talked about this a long time ago, but science is now catching up with the Bible. And that's one of the three things that science has recently discovered about uh, your brain and pornography. The second is that porn is very different than all other cravings. Uh, when you look at other cravings, whether it be food or alcohol or drugs or gambling, all of these other cravings demand more in order to be satiated. Now, when you come to br your brain and pornography, it's quite different. Your brain not only craves more, but different it demands variety of pornography in order to satiate. And of course, that's an impossible thing to do to, to, to satiate the lust of the heart and the mind. Uh, and, and, but your brain tries to satiate it through variety. This is why you see people cycle through the, what I call a cycle of sexual brokenness so rapidly now. Uh, you know, we used to say it takes 21 days to form a habit. Well, now it's 21 minutes, sometimes 21 seconds. Uh, and this is something that science has discovered. The third uh, discovery that science has discovered about pornography in the brain is that pornography corrupts our deepest, most basic instincts. And it makes us feel that those behaviors are more common and acceptable than they really are. And so when all of this is occurring, we lose our purpose for which God created us for when we hold on to the brokenness that impacts our lives instead of giving that brokenness over to God and in exchange for restoration. Now this, this holds true for whether you're misusing sex yourself or you've been wounded by somebody else's misuse of sex in your life. And as you alluded to, I was once a man 25 years ago that uh, literally was hours from suicide because I was misusing sex and I tried and tried and tried and tried as hard as I could to get out of the tractor beam of pornography and all kinds of other things. And I couldn't, the harder I tried, the worse it got. I didn't know how to Susan escape. wasn't necessarily aware. Oh, definitely. She had her suspicions. Uh, she asked me questions. And of course, I deflected and lied to her many, many times. Uh, she kind of suspected, um, you know, I think God gives women that uh, sense that something's not quite right. And, uh, and so she did ask me. And it wasn't until um, God literally reached, rescued, and restored me yeah. and my marriage through one man. He was a pastor. And he loved me enough to help me in my marriage get right. And when God restored me in my marriage, that was literally the birth of this ministry we call Avenue. And we've helped thousands of men and women all over the globe uh, experience God's healing from the impact of, of relationship and sexual brokenness. And, and we really understand this because we, we've based all of this on our experiences of ourselves and the thousands of people that we've helped. You know, so many people struggle with life's deepest hurts around sexual and uh, relationship brokenness. Uh, pornography, serial affairs, uh, betrayal, confusion, all of these things. People are desperate to find answers that really work, but they can be elusive, the answers that is, and it can be very frustrating when you find things that don't work. So whether you're ensnared with pornography or misusing sex or have been betrayed in your relationship, what we do at Avenue is we provide you literally a guide who will hold your hand, a real person who will walk you through the healing process. We provide 
a confidential group so that nobody knows that you're getting help. And we provide you a time proven transformational plan. All of this is to help an individual accelerate their restoration so they stop getting ripped off by the devil and instead experience Jesus's promised abundance in their lives, in their relationships, in their finances, and in their purpose. And, and by the way, I just want to take a pause here and explain that it's so important for our audience to understand there's actually two definitions of this word restore. And it's so important to understand the proper definition. Now, the two are man's definition and God's definition. So man takes something that's broken. And when he goes to restore it, he returns it to the original condition. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. If you have a cool car and you wreck it, you want it brought back to its original condition, right? But when you study God and you understand and know his character, you soon realize that God does things infinitely better than man. So when you come to God with a sincere heart and you ask him to restore what is broken in you, a heart, a behavior, your mind, your relationship, marriage, uh, finances, could be your whole family. God always, always, always establishes something more and better than the original condition so that the latter state is significantly better than the former state. But then he doesn't stop there. He, he does it on an ongoing basis so that you and I have no idea how wonderful our life can be with the Lord in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year, in a decade, and so forth. Now, God provides us an amazing promise in the Bible. I, this is one of many examples. But in Romans 12, uh, verse 2, there is a promise that God gave us the ability to literally rewire our brains and restore our brains for the better, to make them more and better than the original condition. I'll paraphrase the, the promise. It's something along the lines of don't conform to the pattern of this world. Mm -hmm. The pattern of the world's misusing sex and using pornography, don't do that. And if you're doing it, get out of it as fast as you can. And then be transformed by the renewing of your mind according to God's word, with God's word, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, imagine that brain rewiring, we've talked about how porn can alter it for the worse. It can be altered for the better. And God gave each of us the control over that change. This is what's so profound. Imagine that your wiring in your brain is a bit like pathways. And when porn-driven pathways are no longer used, they'll eventually disappear. And as you focus on a new direction with new things, the brain simultaneously lays down new pathways that direct you to those good God things. It's important to understand that it's at that point that God says, you and I will know what God's will is for our life, not before. It's profound. That is an incredible promise. And that's what we help people experience through the Avenue program. So I was at a conference um, some time ago. And I opened it up to Q&A, and there was somebody in the audience who asked this great question. Why would the God who created all the galaxies be so interested in restoring a little tiny speck like me on Earth? And, and, and you could hear the, the, the agony, the sincerity, and the glimmer of hope in the question. So I took the person to Ephesians chapter 3 at verse 10, and uh, it says there that God's intent was that through the church, that's you, audience, and I and Debbie and others, it's, it's through you and I that the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. That's all the angels, all the leaders of heaven, according to God's eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is such a profound promise that God loves you so much that he wants to literally show you off to all of heaven's leaders as a proud papa, as a proud father. And he's showing you off to belong to his family. He's showing you off, is accepting you as his child and his wisdom to all the leaders of heaven so that glory can be brought to the one who made it all possible, Jesus Christ. This, uh, this is a stunning picture uh, and promise of how uh, our, our father in heaven loves us and how all the angels are fascinated with God's mercy that's shown towards us, that God's wise plan of making former rebels into leaders, or lovers rather, has literally mystified all of heaven's leaders, and they long to see God's grace, which has been lavished upon us. I mean, that's such an incredible verse and promise, and, but it's, it gets better because 10 verses later, God says, when you go to me, and you ask with a sincere heart for me to restore that thing that's broken. He says this, he promises this, never doubt my mighty power that 
works in you through the Holy Spirit. I will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. I will outdo them all, for, uh, for my miraculous power constantly energizes you through the Holy Spirit. This is profound, because isn't that what we all yearn for, is the power of God energizing us? This is an overwhelming picture of God's promise of his goodness, his power, uh, and his undying love to, that's lavished on each one of us. So what do you ask if you're struggling in this area or you have questions? What do you ask of God when you're, uh, w w when you're wanting to align with his will and his promises in, the, in his power working in, through, and for us? Whether you're single or married, there are likely things like you, you hope for his uh, power to conquer in your life, for perseverance to overcome, for your marriage or future marriage to be restored uh, or to be married for the first time to somebody that you love, for love to win out, for uh, healing of your wounds, to be forgiven, perhaps for the old to vanish and to get a fresh start, to keep your family intact. This was me. This is, I live this. I understand this. To raise up your children together as good parents to, uh, for financial provision, to care for your family and prosper for the future. To have a desire to literally know God intimately and to hear his voice and to respond to him. See, God will answer all of these desires and many, many more uh, for those in the audience. Uh, these are not only possible, but a promise that when both husband and wife come together and start praying either together or individually for their marriage, God's for you and, and with your marriage. So we, we provide uh, ways for people to get help quickly. And, you know, this will not get better in a person's life. It will always get worse if you don't get help. So we provide these guidebooks, the confidential groups. We provide two-day healing intensives. Um, I encourage your audience, if they have uh, influence with their church or pastor, to start the Avenue Healing Ministry at their church or denomination, because God is looking for our church to experience revival, and this is how it starts. We speak, we speak at churches and conferences, and uh, so I want to encourage anybody with influence. This problem is so big in our church. You go into church next time, or however you do it, online or in person, literally seven or eight out of ten men are struggling in this area. And for every one of those men, there's probably at least one woman who's struggling with the question in their mind. Is this normal? Is this right? And so we help you answer all of those questions and far I, more. I want to take a moment and put you on the spot. Um, you just said that you, have, you got to watch your kids grow up. How old are they? 26. Right. You also um, have a strong relationship with Susan. Is that true? Absolutely. She's I've the passion of my life and vice versa. And uh, God's given us a new love for one another. And it's absolutely incredible. She's the most sexy, beautiful, intelligent, creative, awesome woman. On and the that planet she Earth. is. <laughs> Where would you be today had oh, you man. not turned around then? Oh, I have no doubt. Uh, I would be dead, literally, physically, uh, with what I was doing. It was Russian roulette with uh, literally five of the six chambers uh, loaded uh, with a bullet. Uh, I, it was just a matter of time. I well, really I want you to pray before we close. We have about five minutes left, but you brought up some, and that's what I wanted to bring up. There are people, um, you know, I think watching, um, and I want you to specifically pray first for those that have entered in or been struggling for some time with pornography. You know, um, Clay, there are people that watch this particular program every day, and we know of some divine appointments that have occurred. So if you are tuned in to this program today and you are struggling or just meddling with pornography, this message is for you. There are no accidents in God's kingdom. Your life can be changed. And then if you are struggling with an addiction, other than that, Clay, I would like you to pray for others as well, because there are a lot of addictions coming out right now when people are in their homes. Binge eating, um, binge reading, not focused on Christ, um, other kinds of sins penetrating through the door. And you've talked about how corruption can happen within seconds. But Jesus can rewire us. And that reminded me of John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, if the Son sets you free, 
you will be free yes. indeed. That's restoration. And you said the restoration is not only that, but better. Your life can and will be better if you make that first step. Clay, we have about three minutes. Would you lead us in prayer? And I'm asking you who are watching, take this prayer seriously. A life-changing, grace-filled God is waiting for you on the other side of this prayer. Father, we come to you with grateful hearts that you have uh, created us in your image, that you've given us a life. And for many of us, uh, this life is difficult. I understand I've struggled, my wife has struggled. Oh boy, the pain is very real. And we understand all of that pain. And Lord, you bore all of that pain on the cross and you forgave all of us. And all you asked is for us to come to you and to trade, make an exchange for that pain, for the wonderful restore, restoration that you promised, Father, to make us more and better than our original condition before we came to you. I pray that for absolutely every person that is watching or listening to this and for those that they influence, Lord, because you have people in the audience right now who know yes. somebody who is struggling in this area, whether it's uh, misusing sex or being impacted by a relationship, um, a betrayal, or any other um, a compulsive habit that is uh, side swiping us at this point, whether it's eating or gambling or, or shopping or whatever it might be. Father, I pray that you set them free. I pray, Father, that you help them experience your abundant life. This is the life that you have for every one of us where absolutely everything good is overflowing in our lives. Oh, it might not be perfect, but it is an overflowing life and it gets better and better and better. Father, I pray that you help us experience your transformation through the rewiring of our brains, through relationship with one another and with you. Help us be bold, Father. Ask for help because you're waiting there with outstretched arms, ready to embrace those who ask for help. So Father, I pray for courage and boldness in every single person watching or listening this and for those that they also have influence with to reach out and ask for help dial our phone number, look us up on the website, get some help because Lord, you will never leave anybody behind. You will always rescue the person. You will always restore that person who asked with a sincere heart, Father. And thank you, Father, for making us more and better than the original condition of our hearts, our minds, our lives, our finances, our relationships, and that you do it on an ongoing basis, Father. And you yeah, rejoice Lord. by showing us off. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, thank Father. You, we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer, you are new in Christ. Old things are gone. All things are new. Begin that walk on rewiring your system. What comes to mind to me is if Clay would not have turned around, hmm. Thousands of people would not have known the saving grace and may have been in the same situation. How many people could you influence today? How many people are you influencing today? Could your victory be someone else's victory tomorrow? Thanks for watching. Stay with us. So many ways to watch our shows. We appreciate you being here. Be safe and stay centered in the Christ who loves you more than anyone.